uh, and I'm using uh, just ordinary linseed oil. It hasn't got any uh, dryers added to it or anything fancy. Right, so to start with, straight from the tube, royal blue and um, enough oil make it loose but as you can see it's not it's not drippy very important if it starts dripping then uh, add more paint less oil okay now even though I want a horizon uh, this end, this line here only needs to be generally horizontal if it was going to be um, a sort of highly finished painting of the sea, I would probably have a pencil line as a guide, but uh, not necessary for this sort of thing. I still haven't decided whether it's going to be land or sea yet. So when I start adding the red, um, it literally just sort of pull them together carefully. I don't take a lump of this the blue and a lump of the red and then start mixing them together. I just sort of pull them together from the edges like so. That might be useful for some people. It gives you much more control on the on what happens here, this this new colour, which is the same colour on as on the um the painting I showed you earlier. So let's just try and make this exciting. And the way you make it exciting is like that. So you can see it starts to um, starts to have movement, and it has movement because of the fact that uh, I'm moving a lot in the painting. So I don't I don't sort of stay in one spot long enough for it to look overworked. Have a little bit of white. So the same same brush, not even a wipe, just adding a bit more white to it. And um, like what I want is to get something up here that's a little bit dr dramatic, um, because I can't help it, I've got to have it. So, uh, let's find paint gray, and you have to have no fear. So here's a little bit of no fear. Not a lot of oil. I mean, I'm, I, there's a bit of oil on the brush, but I haven't added any more. That, that's not fearless enough. I watched um, the film Mr. Turner. I've got it um, permanently on my computer. And I, I, I've only watched it, uh, I think, twice before, and I thought, well, I'll just watch it last night. And uh, just for a bit of inspiration, you know, a bit of, a bit of cloud, cloud inspiration. And if you haven't seen it, I can recommend it. Quite a strange film, but sort of interesting. And I, I think I'll add a hole in the sky so that we don't just have all dark. We could have... Um, we can have some light blue. So again, you see, this is exactly the same brush that I was using when I put that bit of paint there. Okay. I'm just using the blue a bit, which is that corner. And we'll just have that as a, a hole in the stormy sky at the moment. There we are. That's sort of slightly interesting. And let's see what we can do. Rather than make it too um, too predictable, red and Payne's grey. We'll have that there. And I think we'll head off towards more light at that 
that uh, side of the painting up there. So let's have a little bit more <clears throat> royal blue. And then I think, I think, what do I think? Okay, an experiment here. Let's get a, normally I don't use a palette knife yet, uh, but I'm going to. Just to show you, you know, it doesn't really matter what you do. You'll end up with a nice sky if you stay reasonably relaxed. Hopefully I'm not in the way. So what I'm going to start thinking about now is how to get this above us and that away from us. So by adding this streak of light along the bottom, that'll have that effect. Should we do it? I think I might start do something like this. I've got a little bit of texture there, but I think I want to I might glow down here. So let's just get a whole load of white paint. A bit like icing a cake. And I think we'll have it coming up into there just a little bit. When you, if you're doing exactly what I'm doing now, don't don't try to smooth it too much uh, because that'll be done with a big dry brush. So at the moment, it's just get just to actually get paint on the um, on the board. And just squeezing out some white here. This is going to be a, um, a high white painting. By that, I mean high usage of paint. So another lump there. Um, uh, most of you have heard me say this before, but uh, what you're seeing is... Um, the zoom version of my painting and you won't see the colors properly until I photograph it at the end and then I'll share that picture with you well I'll send it to your high-res picture if you want the best way and then you'll see what the real colors I'll show you my true colors as they say uh, so what's always amazed me about palette knife is that you can use a piece of steel and get absolutely smooth cloud-like shapes. You don't actually have to use a brush. That's going to probably be white in there, so I'll, I'll cover that with a brush quickly. But when you've already got a colour on the board um, and you start to push into it like this, you will get you will get clouds. It's impossible not to. And you have to just believe me. The more you can relax, uh, the more they will look like clouds. Move a little bit along the top edge of that, I think.
don't make too much of a line. Got to keep an eye on things like that. You see, that's sort of quite nice. I don't want it to be too dominant because something's got to happen down here that's going to take you up to that. So I think we'll just take that through there. Let's put a bit of a bit of red. Now there will be consequences of using this much red, um, but it's going to be one of those things where you've just got to sort of dig your hole and then get out of it. In other words, um, pile the color on, and then wait, wait and see what happens. In other words, see what I'm doing. I'm sort of it's just like applying um, a cement render to a wall, gouging the colour together and in the gaps in the substandard plywood so that it, there won't be any gaps at the end of it. It'll be, they'll be full of paint. That could look quite nice there. And now, if you do something like this, uh, it's the same with normal clouds. Take that colour off. It's got, I don't mean remove it. I mean, it's got to... Um, got to go off the edge of the picture otherwise it looks too contrived okay now here's a his little um A display of confidence. If you haven't got enough paint there and you spent time painting these um, clouds up here and you see a lot of paint, why not take a little bit off there and put it over there? Because all, it, whatever, all, all these marks, let me just point out some marks. There's a there's a mark there where I've just literally done that, I guess. Um, and it sort of um, sort of irrelevant, anyway. Okay. <laughs> so let's do, let's put something here. So the, the, if you saw the advert that I put on Facebook, where I have the sort of hole in the cloud, this is exactly how I did it. It's, you, you start out with a pale blue, then you put dark around it, except on one side, um, and then you just sort of go around the edge with, with white, and that's all it is. That's the entirety of the amount of magic that you need to do that. Just put it on loosely like so. Okay. So when I hit that with a big brush, uh, it, you'll see quite a transformation. Brand new brush, never used. This is titanium white with... a a minuscule amount of oil. You can use white straight from the tube with a palette knife. You know, it'll just sort of go where you want it to go. If you if you have just white on this brush and no oil, uh, you'll have a heck of a time uh, blending it like so, or even covering a large area. It will just sort of clog up into a little, you know, a little pile. Um, you notice these edges here, right? Don't if you find yourself doing it, try try to stop it. Don't don't do the little um, you know bobbly things. They just don't look right. It'll make your painting look cartoony. So do that to it occasionally. Yeah, it looks more like a cloud, especially the ones we get nowadays. Anyway. Right, so the white and that grey, they can mix in quite nicely there. You see, just a, a quick wiggle and you get form, which is what you want in clouds. You don't want flat clouds. Got to have a bit of form. Let's pick that there. That gives a tumbling effect down through the picture. 
So let's tumble a bit more. So we've gone in, we've gone from cumulus nimbus to stratos. And maybe we don't want stratos. So let's just do a lump there. Okay. And that's a bit of white board showing there. Do it this way. You know, don't worry too much about the shapes that you're making. Just, I mean, keep keep your clouds so they look as though they've got a bit of wind in them. Um, but don't be too concerned about, you know, that blue shape. It'll it'll find its own borders. And you must admit that's nicely and nicely irregular, which is what you want. Um, this bit of light on this cloud here could have, because again, you don't want just a big flat area. That's quite flat, that, right? That dark bit. If you just sort of tickle it a little bit, you'll get more form into it just by breaking it up a little bit, like so. And then again, when I go over it with a big brush, it'll uh, it'll iron it out. And let's just stick something there for the heck of it. And let's see what happens when we get the big brush on it. I think that needs to lift slightly there. Okay, and then down here, still I'm still stuck between land and sea. I think it'll be land probably. It's that big, and that's uh, eight centimeters, uh, which in inches, yep, three inches. So basically, I've just thrown paint on. And it's got a reasonable effect coming through. I don't want to, I could I could go along there like that and soften that, but I don't want it, it's too soon. I'll work sort of from there up. And it's just this business, which is. This technique was shown to me by uh, an artist at college. You can look him up on the internet. He's deceased now. His name is Trevor Kemp. And he was a basically a he was a painter, but he was also a um, printmaker. So he would make uh, a few etchings, not many etchings, mostly lithographs and uh, lino cuts. And um, he, he was quite a character. He looked like Lord Monet, but uh, much taller, big beard, and uh, I was painting some landscape in college, and he came up to me and he said, "Don't don't do that." I had a little tiddly soft brush, you know, and I was sort of blending each each bit of the cloud. He says, "You'll be here forever doing that," um, and he just showed me this. It never occurred to me until I saw it, and it's just so quick and it's so pleasing when you get it right so, so as i'm doing it i'm doing this i'm actually turning the brush just skimming it and then every now and then quick wipe Right, so I'm approaching the bottom of the painting, so I'm getting to the point where I might actually smooth that down a bit. It looks pretty smooth um, on my screen, um, but the painting isn't quite as smooth as I'd like it. Okay, that's looking reasonable. I'm still going to hold off on that because there's a few things I want to do up there with a the palette knife again. And if I, uh, the reason for that is, um, if I if I do a quick sweep across with the big brush, it will pick up paint because there's quite a lot of paint there. Uh, but I want to do a few highlights up in the um, sky with the light brush effect. Once I've got that right, then I'll. Um, I'll do the bottom. 
So this is white with no oil, just straight from the tube. And the point of this is to pull in a few um, sort of crispy, crispy little highlights. And this sort of stuff is best done bit by bit. Okay, so that's sort of blur them a bit. Pretty big hair there. Get off. So I'm not sure it shows up on your screen, but the whites here are whiter than the whites over here. It's very subtle, but uh, it does make a difference. Okay, let's have a bit more pure white. That's looking a bit straight for my liking, so I think I might just sort of break it just a touch. Yep, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, have some light hitting that, I think. When, when you get to this stage, well, when I get to this stage, uh, I start looking for compositional problems. And that is something that uh, the only way you can describe it is it's just slightly displeasing to the eye. Or it just you just know that it has the... Um, uh, there's this thing called the cartoon factor. In other words, a um, couple of... A couple of you have mentioned this about your paintings. As you get this effect, it looks like a cartoon. And it's just something off. And it's a mixture between composition and technique. And the things, the thing that is off, one thing that is off in this painting at the moment that just hits me like a sucker punch is that. Now, you may think that's just a little bit of white cloud there, but it's got no purpose. It's got no... Um, it's not leading you anywhere, it's just a, a, a light smudge. So the thing to do is to um, desmudgicate it, turn it into something that's got a bit of presence. And I put it to you that that has more presence. And it's not just a question of making it more complex. It's it's to do with contrasts, positioning, echoing shapes, uh, balance. Got a nice lift to it as it gets to the edge of the painting. Um, and the next thing that I don't like is the there's that bit of red cloud below it. I, I don't mind the red, um, but it needs something to break it just a little bit. And again, it's one of those little things that you just spot after a while of painting. Okay, that. Yep, I don't like that. That's got to go. Just the top part just needs to be messed around a bit. Okay. Reasonable. What else can I do up there? Still think it needs a bit more. See, the idea in this, by the time when I put the landscape in, what I want people to do is basically head for this part of the painting here. That's the sort of, that's the soft, that's the honey spot. You know, that's the exciting bit. It will be anyway. 
Um, in fact, let's do that, make it more exciting. So I want people to come along the landscape, travel up here. I want that little connector there to be interesting. And it is actually, again, you'll see on the photo at the end, it's actually a very nice, nice bit of cloud in there. Uh, and then follow that around, take a little glance at this, look at that, and then come back down and travel around. So it's a big circular sort of composition. So I want people to travel around there. So I think that needs to be enhanced a bit down through here. And it really is that easy. I'm not doing anything that is planned here. Uh, well, it is planned in as much as I'm, I know I'm going to work there. <laughs> that sort of sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? But um, what I actually do in that work is just a bit of a mystery uh, because I don't know. I don't know until I put the paint on. And I think that might do it there. Nice, nice little bit of a little catch light. And these little strandy bits that come off, you know, things like this, these. Um, this, uh, what else? Little feathery bits and light spots like that. That's not deliberately put there, that little light spot, but it just happens to look okay. Um, what you could probably do is something like that there, I think. And it, 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 all you need to do to do exactly what I'm doing is just get get into the same frame of mind. You can you can all waggle your hand around with a palette knife. Um, and, and you know, don't don't become obsessed with getting it right. One of the best quotes, I think it was Salvador Dali, said, "Don't try to be perfect because you won't do it." Nobody can paint a perfect painting. There's always going to be something wrong. So don't. So just forget being a perf perfectionist. And go for the, well, hopefully, go for the wow factor if you can get it to work. Right, so I'm going to leave the sky for a minute. Uh, after a quick blend, a few more drags like this. Right, now the bit that I wanted to do, which it won't decimate the brush completely, but it's just a sort of that, which is actually quite pleasing. Nice natural blend into whatever I put underneath. And in fact, what I put underneath is going to be a landscape, but not a green landscape. Right, what I'm going to do, hmm, it's going to be interesting, slightly smaller brush. Right, um, this is a completely skanky brush from the other day. It's almost drying off. Got a hint of green on it, um, but... What I think will be interesting is if I make the landscape out of Payne's grey, uh, Japanese red, and ultramarine blue. And that's what I'll use to make the landscape. Because in certain lights, you know, uh, a landscape doesn't have to be green. Right. So. Right, so, um, yeah, well, I forgot what the colours are now. Uh, ultramarine blue. In fact, I'm going to make, make it bluer. Um, Japanese red paints grey. And in fact, there's a little bit of um, bit of royal blue in there, but not, not that you'd notice. It gets uh, covered up with all the other colours. Now, what I want to do is blend the... I might take the landscape up higher. The The whole point of doing this nice soft bit here is that I can work into that. So I can I can first of all establish roughly what I want to do here. So I want I want a dark sort of landscape. It won't stay dark. 
And I need to back off and look at it just to make sure that that's level because when I stand to the left of the picture and try and do that, as you know, it usually ends up going downhill, but that's okay. Right, so all this stuff here, watch what happens, okay? Watch what happens over here. I'm fascinated by this, what, this effect you can get. See the snow appearing already? It's like um, suddenly we're, we're, you know, we're quite low down on the field and there's, there's the um, little bits of grass showing through the snow. That's not what I'm going to do. I just want to show you that because it's sort of, it's always fascinated me. All right. So do I want a hill? I, I think it needs something. So I think, um, hmm. all right. In fact, I'm going to take it up. I'm probably going to end up about there that point. So I'll use these colors to give the effect of perspective. So I'll just do a little bit here. Keep it out of the way, Stuart. All right. Let's do a little bit there. If I start to do this, see what I mean? We've got fields that are even further away. In fact, I'm going to carry that across and just let the colors do what they want to do. Occasionally turn the brush around if you want a slightly stronger color again. So, so maybe maybe there, there's going to be a sort of a rise in the ground slightly. Okay, landscape without painting landscape. Right, so a bit more Payne's gray and a bit more ultramarine. And the thing that really darkens it down is adding the red. As soon as you, in fact, if you think about it, ultramarine blue, Payne's grey, you'd think that would be quite a dark colour. It gets darker when you add the red. And it gets more interesting. Right, so we've got that weird little distant thingy there. I don't know what it is, but let's turn it into a, let's make it a bit more, a bit more interesting. Sort of a bit of a headland. And let's have some more of these here, I think. Interesting. Mm. I'm going to add a bit of oil to it. So whatever whatever happens with this foreground just happens. There's no thought really going into it. The reason I'm adding the oil is just to give you a solid line every now and then. So these this could be marshes. Okay, so if it's marshes and it's got the odd tree breaking up your view, like so. Just a touch, just a just a hint, really. I I definitely like mysterious stuff. Funny, um, when you when you set out to paint something and you decide to go for mysterious, what is the thing that makes it mysterious? And I've never really cracked that one, I don't know. You either have mystery or you don't. Yeah, you can see. Hmm. Now, mystery. Okay, mystery. That's a bit of mystery. What is that little light spot? What's it doing in there? Well, let's leave it. So that one is, every time you look at it, you think, what is that? What's going on? Does this person know what they're doing? And there's another one there. Another little light spot. So it's something. You know? It doesn't have to be anything. It just needs to be a something. Same as those over there. don't know what they are. Hmm. 
Okay. So it starts to put in your mind that maybe that's the sea over there. Who knows? I don't. Got no idea. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> right. There we go. So you've got marshland, distant woods. Possibly the sea, bit of a cliff, and something just before you look at the painting there. That's a stopper. That's just to catch the eye. We don't have a stopper on this side, so I think we should probably put one there. Make it a big one. There we go. Okay, right. What else shall I do? Oh, yeah, I've got to get rid of the polar bear and the um, alien. And they're, they're easy to fix. Um, you've just got to make things stop looking like eyes. Oh, there's this thing I, I, I mentioned in my last video on YouTube. So when you do sky like this, um, you end up with some piles of paint like that it's quite a pile of paint there um that is a lump of paint so what you can do is just get your palette knife make sure it's completely clean and then just squish them so which one shall i do first uh, let's do that one. So there, there's a build-up of paint there. And when I squish it, you'll see it become lighter. Or not. You might see it. It's uh, Because it if I take the bumps off the paint, the lumpy bumps, um, they don't catch the light quite the same, and they should get lighter. There we go. Okay, and then here... There's one or two there, so let's just clean it a bit. That's a little bit of paint skin that's dried. I'll get rid of that. And um, what else should we do? All right, I still want to do a bit more work up on that top left-hand side. What's what's um, quite effective in a painting is to give the feeling that you are looking up into the cloud. You know, you've got to get this sort of towering, um, slightly majestic look to it. Uh, and the thing that usually does that is is the is to get depth from this point to that point. It's got to it's got to go round and away from you. Um, and the way you do that, it's a foreshortening thing. So I've got this and this and these sort of feathered lines here. And I think if I add more, just a little bit, and then maybe move it over that way just a touch. You see, again, a piece of steel can make a soft cloud. It starts off to make a soft cloud anyway. Bring this forward here just a touch, I think. So the distance between there and there is getting bigger every time I add another another sort of layer. So let's just give that a quick blend. Then I'll take a photo and you can see what, what it really looks like. Although before I take the photo, I might just do a bit of palette knife in the land, just in a couple of places, just to um, get some twinkly bits in there. And then maybe I'll adjust the camera before I do that, to get that toward the middle of what you're looking at now. Cool, right, good, I think that's nice. Okay, Doug, that's what else is, oh, right, that, 
Right, that's that sort of grating on my nerve a bit. Just needs to calm down a bit. There we go. All right. Yeah, you'll be surprised how red that is when you see the photograph. Um, so let me just adjust the camera slightly. Okay, so I'm not really going to do much. Um, uh, just a palette knife with a bit of white on it. And where does it need it? In fact, does it need it? I think it does. Okay, so we've got a nice little bit of uh, white showing through. And that's that's enhanced by the uh, pattern that the brush made in the gesso. So if you're seeing, 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 <laughs> if you're seeing streaks that way, that's just the gesso. So I think what I'll do, I quite like that bit. Right, I don't want to overdo this, so. Um, and then a little bit, just a, a dot there and there, maybe there. Okay, I think we're done. Right, I'm going to photograph that and uh, show you what it really looks like. So uh, feel free to unmute and um, we can talk about what we what you've done, what I've done, and how you can fix anything that you wanted to fix. <laughs> 